Hello, my name is Trisha Parsons and I'm the Children and Family Services Librarian at Clearview Library District. And this is the video for Northern Lights Art. This event is being held in collaboration with our Clearview Reads program, which is on March 19th at Severance High School. Author James Campbell will begin talking about his wilderness adventures in Alaska at 7 p.m. And we hope to see you there. But for now, one thing that you might see if you go to Alaska are the Northern Lights. And so today we are going to work on some Northern Lights art. So you would have picked up a kit from the library and I will go over the supplies that you'll find inside that kit and what you can do with them. All right, so in the kit that you would have picked up from the library, You'll have a bag that looks like this with some inspiration pictures for your Northern Lights art. You'll also have inside of that bag uh, a half, uh, two half sheets of watercolor paper so you can experiment. And you'll also get uh, some Arctic animal cutouts that you can add uh, to the top of your Northern Lights art if you would like. And then you will receive some tissue paper. This is called bleeding tissue paper. So this is specific craft tissue paper so that you can get the pigment from the paper onto the watercolor paper. Um, if you try to make this craft with regular gift tissue paper at home, it won't work. So um, I learned that one the hard way myself. And then you'll also get a paintbrush so that you can um, dip it in some water and lay the pigment from the tissue paper down. And so from home, you'll need a little cup of water. And for the final touches, you'll want either a black or a blue crayon so you can add the rest of the sky details to your art. So you'll take your, um, your half sheet of paper and you will lay down the tissue paper into strips to create a sort of Northern Lights design. So I notice when I'm looking at them that the Northern Lights often go in either sort of vertical lines or in horizontal lines. And they're sort of wavy and then in between those is either blue or black sky. So I'm gonna try to create some kind of, I think I'm gonna do like a vertical pattern. And I have pink and orange here. Um, because I didn't want to take all of the more uh, typical Northern Lights colors from you all at home, um, but usually they're the lights that I've uh, observed through pictures are more blue or purple or green. But we're going to work with these colors today and see what result we can get. So you're going to want to cut your tissue paper into strips. And I'll cut probably like two of these long strips from the pink and then two from the orange. And then I think I will cut those to smaller sizes. And I'll just start with that. Did you know that in certain places you can actually hear the Northern Lights? electromagnetic pulses or something like that that creates a uh, staticky noise if you are in the right spots to hear them. So if you're curious to know more about that in the kit that I uh, that you would have picked up from the library, there is a handout with some links to be able to listen to the northern lights and learn more about the noises that they make. All right, so I'm going to go with this as my pattern and then all this extra white space over here, I'll fill in with my blue crayon for more of the sky. And then once you have your paper laid out in a pattern that you want, you're gonna go in and add water on top. So you might want something to work on top of like some newspaper or some cardboard because it will get wet and messy. So I'm gonna lay this on this piece of cardboard and generously put water all over. 
this, the more water, the more the, the pigment can leak onto the paper. So this isn't like using, you know, just a dab of glue. You really want to use a lot. So have fun and soak that tissue paper. Okay, now you'll see that some of the pigment from the tissue paper is already starting to leak out. So that's great, it's working. Now we just will leave this to dry. The wetter you got your paper, the longer it will take to dry. But once it has dried, you can peel the tissue paper off and move on to the next steps. Okay, so unfortunately my paper didn't bleed through uh, in the middle here. So I am going to try again with more pink paper and we'll see if that works. So you may find that you'll have to do a few layers. You'll need to do a little bit of experimenting to get the right um, amount that you need. And you may need to try some different colors. I think that this particular paper is a little bit darker than that first pink that I used, so that might work a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so after some experimenting, what I found was that if you lay the water down on the paper first and then add the strips and then put the water on top, then you get a much richer color payoff. So I would recommend getting your paper wet first and then laying down your strips and adding color on to the top of that. And if you've done all of those things and the color still is sparse in some areas, you need to make it darker, you can grab your brush and move the pigment around that way because it's essentially creating water color. So if you reactivate it, get it wet again, and then you can move it around on the paper um, if it's just not as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If it hasn't covered as much of the area as you had wanted it to, then you could move it around some more. So I'm gonna try one more thing and then I'm going to be all done with mine. So mine looks very orange on the outside and very pink on the inside and it looks a little bit more like a tornado or something than northern lights. So I'm going to try to add some more orange to the middle and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here's my finished piece. I added more orange to that purple to break up the pink vacuum in the middle. Um, and then we've got these really vibrant lights in the middle of the sky and I used my blue crayon with a little bit of my black crayon at the bottom to create the dark background. And then I cut out a polar bear because polar bears are my favorite animal and I can add him to the picture and he's just lounging, enjoying, it, enjoying the northern lights. I wish I could be him. All right, thank you for joining us for this virtual Northern Lights Art Program. And we hope that we can see you in person at the Author Talk by James Campbell on March 19th at Severance High School.